Right, welcome everyone. We're glad to see you this afternoon. And I am Joan Benjamin. I'm with the North Central Region SARE program. And you're listening this afternoon to speakers who've had grants through our grant program. We're going to have Laura Worstel speak this afternoon on wild eating at Scattering Fork Outdoor Center. We have a microphone here for when you have questions. We ask you to use the microphone because we are videotaping this session. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. I'm glad to meet you. Good, good afternoon. I am Laura Worstel, and I'm from uh, Scattering Fork Outdoor Center, and we're located just southeast of Mexico, Missouri, on about a 47 acres of woods and creek and trail and and in fact we're along the side of scattering fork creek and that's where it got its name since 1992 Sc uh, scattering fork outdoor center has been working with kids from preschool through kindergarten to help them learn about working together we're lots of teamwork and enjoying the outdoors and nature we are a 501c3 educational facility, and we're dedicated to providing personal growth through outdoor education. Every year in April, we open the center for what we call one of our public days, and that's wild edibles. And we have the public is invited to come out and taste uh, to identify or find out which ones they are. Our, all of our roots and shoots and leaves and... and nuts that grow out there and because most people really don't know that there are a lot of things out there that are edible and uh, because they're in the wild they don't really trust them and they think okay I'm not sure I want those and that's why we do it. This, um, this project and this grant came up because we realized that we saw a need in these young children to learn that the outdoors has many, many healthy foods, good tasting, fruits and nuts and flowers and leaves and seeds that they can learn to plant, care for, and harvest for themselves and their families. They don't know that. We believe that young people can become lifelong advocates of healthy eating when they learn how tasty and healthy wild the natural foods really are and how they can produce and harvest them themselves. Youth become intensely interested in food production when they have the chance, the opportunity, to develop their skills and knowledge in planting and harvesting these wild foods. This project, we picked a group from the city of Mexico. It's a 4-H it's a club, and it's called Rugrats. Let me see what happens when I do this. This is, this is the uh, grant. This is a group of young seven, eight, nine-year-olds who had no experience at all being outside, even in the woods. And so uh, when we, they have a tremendous leader, and when we brought them out, uh, we did the preliminary work on uh, this area because we'd set it aside for this. And um, we had to pick up the big logs and the, and the sticks and things that they couldn't move. But they had to come out and learn how to use, we, they didn't even know how to use a rake or a hoe or a spade. And so we brought them out and um, we have two great groups that help us with everything we do like this. And that's the Area Master Gardeners, which I'm sure lots of you know about Master Gardeners and a garden club in the, in the city of Mexico that uh, these women came out and helped us with these boys and girls. You see that they don't know much about the sho shovels and anyway, they learned in a big yeah, in a big hurry, but they had to be shown how to do it. The staff partnered with these uh, uh, master gardeners and the garden club people in, we had three sessions, three after-school sessions. They meet every Wednesday all year, all summer, all winter long through the school system, school uh, time. And uh, so it was easy for them to uh, come out after school. And you can see from the bottom picture that uh, the clearing goes back a certain area, and then from there on, it's woods. 
So, and this section here is on the south side of the trail, and uh, the top picture is on the north side of the trail. The trail goes right down through the middle of this section. Now, this is a permanent site. It's not going to be used for anything else. The, uh, the people who use our low ropes course will go right through there on that trail, and they'll be able to see what ha what's happening. And the first session, as I said, on, on March the... Um, 21st was devoted to showing them, lear them learning how to use the spades and, and the rakes especially and picking up all the trash and, and moving it out of the way. And they also learned uh, about the, uh, that the needs for minimal shade for this kind of plants and for the depth of soil and the uh, nutrients that would be in the so soil and it had to be well-drained soil. Then on April 11th, the next time they came out, they had to learn to use those spades and shovels to plant the trees and the shrubs and the, and the, uh, the uh, native trees and shrubs. These were from a new kind of packet that the uh, Department of, uh, Missouri Department of Conservation puts out. They put the packets out for years. This year they had one that was called Wild Edibles. And in it there were 10 varieties of uh, trees and shrubs, all of them nut-bearing or fruit-bearing, and there were ten in each, uh, there were five of each one of them, so we planted 50 trees. And here's some of them. Now, there's a couple on here that we did not have in our woods. Almost everything <laughs> under the sun is in our woods because it is on a creek, and it's a, it's a, um, it's ancient. It hasn't been used for anything for years and years and years, so that it has a deep soil and it lo has lots of water. The black choke cherry and the elderberry and blackberry, and now we did not have golden currant. We're going to have them. They have a blueberry and they, they look good. And the red, red mulberry, pawpaw. It, it, that wasn't it. That one wasn't there when I thought it would be. The master gardeners and the and the garden club women said, "Now, really, they need to know how to plant flowers." So, a little section of the north side, we let them plant uh, flowers. We already had in that area lots of uh, uh, violets and uh, spring beauty and even dandelions. And so, uh, but they put a few annual flowers in there. And the nasturtiums really did well, even with the, with the drought. So these are the, the trees we planted. The third station on April the 25th was when they had to come back and take care of this area. And here they are just pouring water out of cans. But uh, and there's another show, slide that shows you where they're mulching. I think in this bottom slide, you can see that we didn't let them just go in nilly-nilly planting plants. You can almost see the, uh, uh, the, the swing of the rows. Now this, w if I turn around, then you can't hear me, can you? The swing of the rows was in a curve and uh, so that the trees were planted in the area on a curve. And in between, you can see where uh, where the grass was still there. The, they didn't try to rake up all the grass. They just raked it so that we could plant them, and that's where that is. Okay? And then this time, they got to pick up, pick the leaves off of the spring beauty and the dandelions and the violets and make a salad. They weren't really great for salads, but they learn. And then I also have... Uh, violet jelly made out of violet blossoms. And anybody that's tasted violet jelly on a cracker, I know some people think elderberry's better, but violet's pretty good too. Mm -hmm. So now as an outcome from this project, uh, the, the students learned to grow these 15 um, species of plants and how to keep them healthy, and then how to improve their own health by learning how to eat them, enjoying them. 
these natural foods. They learn how the soil and the plants and the people are all parts of a natural system, and they're, then they're a part of it also. And they learn how one plot of land, not really big, can produce, can be used to plant um, native plants and multiple crops to benefit them in, mutually. They also learn that as a team of co-learners, they learned how to work together. If one person could hold the plant, the other person could dig the, uh, the hole, and then they learned how to tamp it in. And, and um, this was will show them much about working together. Many of the skills they uh, required to produce those foods produce knowledge that can't be obtained from books. You can't just go read a book and say, it tells you how to stick a shovel in the ground and how deep to put it in and what kind of a plant to put in it and how much you can cover them up and how much you can't. These young participants um, also learned that, that now they can take those and produce their own plants. After the second time when they were out there and, and planted the plants, one of these little boys came up to me and that afternoon and he said, you know what? And I said, no, you never know what when it's one of those. And he said... I can now, this was on the, the first part of April, the 11th, and on the 22nd of April, uh, the Mexico uh, Department of uh, Parks and Recreation always give, to give out free trees. And he said, now I can go and get a free tree and take it and plant it in my garden, and I know my grandma will let me use her shovel. So I thought, <laughs> gee, he's, he's gotten something out of it just like that. And I said, sure, why don't you tell one of your friends to do the same thing? Because the trees are free. All you have to do is go pick them up. So I think um, you, you, it's hard to realize what the impact is when you get children out in the wild, out in the woods, and let them learn how to do something, in addition just to go and buy and pick up something to take home. Every, uh, about two weeks ago, we had 80 preschool, kindergarten kids, not preschools, kindergarten kids, out for, for uh, well, they come in sessions and they come in the morning because that's when kindergarten kids are their best. <laughs> and um, it's, it's um, almost unbelievable what they can put in a gallon Ziploc bag to take home, from walnuts to hickory nuts to acorns to all kinds of leaves, just about anything on earth. And they, uh, and they just get so much out of being out in the wild. That's one of the reasons that Scattering Fork Outdoor Center is so much fun. Anyway, we know absolutely that most of these S Scattering Fork students will never, they won't become farmers, but they can all grow and use their own natural foods. So here at, uh, at Scattering Fork, they learn how their health and happiness can improve by getting outdoors, working in the soil, planting something, collecting it, and um, then eating it. Eating it, whether it's a berry or a nut or a fruit or seeds. We teach them the agricultural skills and knowledge they need, and they all, we also teach team building to build a community of natural food enthusiasts and consumers. We've used the advice from the uh, Conservation Department and the um, Audrain County Extension Service. Of course, our, our favorite helpers and favorite people who come out and say, yes, we'll help you do this, we'll help you any way you want, are the, uh, the Master Gardeners and the Garden Club. They were helping, at, they were invaluable in instructing some of our staff on how to do this. Um, our main source, of course, is our 40-plus acres of woods and small clearings of all of these young and mature species of uh, native species and that in this uh, area that we've set aside. So let me see if... I didn't put this together, but I would have done a worse job than this. So <laughs> I, um, I had a picture of the, the place, the area as it looks now. We have a really nice sign that came from some uh, extra uh, wood that we have around and someone who has a rotor, a 
a, a, a it can route out the, the words, and it showed the, the plants all being, uh, as after they were mulched, they looked great. They don't look so great now. The kids are going to be back in the spring. We'll, we'll order another uh, bundle because we do have to do some replacing. Uh, the the, the uh, drought wasn't any better to us than it was to anybody else in the whole ca country. And so, but they won't mind. They'll love to be out there. And uh, now they know how to dig in themselves. Are there any questions? Yes. When you work with the, uh, just kind of for your, for your whole uh, organization there, you, am, am I correct, you take people out and show them what the plants are that you can eat? You can use yeah, they walk on the trails, and uh, oh, sorry, she said when we uh, when we have them out for the public days, like Grandparents' Day, and we do a wild edibles, we do a wildflower walk in the spring, and if you want to see something gorgeous, you ought to see the woods with just masses of flowers on both sides of the trails. Yes, we do. We take them out, we and we let them um, sample anything that. Now we're we're really careful to make sure that they never sample anything that they haven't, that they don't know for sure is edible. Because there are things out there that aren't edible and probably are not good for you. And there's some that are just staying sticky and nasty. <laughs> but yes, we do. Because they, uh, uh, lots of them, uh, that's what, with these are all ages. We have, you, sure, sure. We have a lot of, uh, of older adults, <laughs> middle-aged people and younger. Yeah, we do. We have that's what our public days are for, and uh, and so that people can come out and it's not a park. It's not used as a park, so you can't just go out there and and wander around because it is a low ropes course, and uh, the part that uh, is a low ropes course isn't. We don't allow anyone on unless they have a certified staff with them, so it's not. It's it's just that you can come, or you can come as a group. The, the uh, uh, Master Gardeners have come out just as a group, just to tour it and see. You. And, and sometimes they'll say, do you mind if I have a spring beauty to take back with me? Nope, we've got gobs. I'll give you a plastic bag, dig it up, <laughs> and take it with you. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's what our public days are for. Yeah, any other questions?